Hi, I'm Mark Forrest from the EAA Sport Air Workshops, and in this segment, we'd like to talk about the installation of a nut plate, something you do a lot of when you're building a sheet metal airplane. A nut plate is essentially a blind fastener. We have a screw that's installed, generally speaking, in some sort of hole in the aircraft, and this could be for an inspection cover or something like that. Now, obviously, if it's on the fuselage of an aircraft, very difficult to get in, get around perhaps, to grab the nut with a wrench or something like that. So a nut plate is a small fastener, a nut, with two little tabs on. That nut is permanently riveted into the structure so that you don't have to go back behind with some sort of wrench when you're installing a screw or a bolt or something like that. Now, how do you install these? Well, one of the issues with a nut plate is that uh, the alignment is somewhat critical in terms of having the nut plate always centered in the hole. And there's a couple techniques, a couple easy ways to do that. And I'd like to describe two of the methods that are commonly used for the installation of a nut plate. There is the very inexpensive method and the somewhat expensive method. Let's start out with the inexpensive method first. So we have our sheet of aluminum where we're going to install the nut plate. The next step is we take our fastener, our screw, and insert it into the hole and actually screw it in a bit into the nut plate just to align the screw and the hole with the nut plate. So you can see there that the nut plate and the screw are connected together now through the sheet. The next thing we have to do is drill the holes so that we can permanently fasten the nut plate to the sheet of aluminum. First thing we do is make sure that we have our nut plate lined up. Then we take our drill, and again, safety tip using pneumatic tools is always remember to disconnect the air line before you install or remove one of the bits. We'll put on our drill bit for this particular nut plate. This is a number 40 drill bit for typically a 332nd rivet. An important safety tip is you do not want to have the air connected to the drill while the drill chuck key is installed on the drill because if you accidentally hit the trigger, it could go flying right into your face or someone standing nearby. So we have everything ready to roll. We'll install the air line and the drill is all set. First thing we do is we take our nut plate and find our first hole. We'll just drill and use the nut plate as a guide to drill the hole. Next step is to take a Clico, which is a temporary fastener, a spring pin fastener that will hold the nut plate in position. We'll install the Clico through the hole and also through the nut plate on this side. So now the Clico has the nut plate secure and it is aligned so that it will not move. We're ready to drill the second hole. Now we have our nut plate essentially ready to rivet. We have the, the big hole where the screw will go through, and then the two small holes where the rivets will go through. Now, another thing to keep in mind is that, generally speaking, a nut plate is the underlying layer of various uh, surfaces that you're going to fasten. So in other words, you might have another surface on top of this that you're screwing down, holding into. So what you have to do there is to either countersink or dimple those small holes and install flush rivets so that the surface that you're putting on, be it a cowl or an inspection plate, will sit flush to that surface of the nut plate. That's the inexpensive and, and simple way of doing a nut plate. Now let's step it up a notch. There's a tool for just about everything, and we have a nut plate jig that you can use to do the same steps that we just did with the two basic Clicos. So we start out with our big hole, and I'll just use that same hole that we used before. We'll just install the nut plate, the new nut plate at an angle here. So we have our hole here. The nut plate jig is set up so that one surface has a large pin 
that mimics the screw size or the fastener size. The other side of the nut plate jig has an alignment pin. So there's two sides to this. One side without the alignment pin, one side with this small alignment pin uh, over to your left there. The first side of the nut plate jig that we set down is the side without the alignment pin and we install it into that screw hole. Next step is to use the nut plate jig and basically what it is is a drill guide. We have two holes that we'll be using to guide the drill. We take our drill bit and install it into the hole to one side of the alignment pin. Drill through. So now we have our first hole perfectly aligned with the screw hole. And again, we use the side that did not have any alignment pin on it. Now we take the nut plate jig, flip it over, and now the large pin and that small alignment hole will fit into the hole that we just drilled. That will sit down flat. We take our drill and on the other side of the nut plate jig, install the drill into the drill, drill guide. Drill through. And now we have the screw hole and then the two rivet holes that we'll use to install the nut plate on. And they're perfectly aligned because the jig is set up to do that for the nut plate. So, we have a couple different methods to install nut plates. One is using Clecos and the other using the nut plate jig.